Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you to each of the witnesses for being here today. Thank you for your testimony. Uh, Mr. Leibovitz, let me, let me start with you. Uh, you spent a number of years leading the FTC. Uh, just today, the FTC announced a task force uh, directed at high-tech giants, directed at both antitrust issues and consumer protection issues uh, in the tech sector. Um, in your judgment, is that a good idea? And if so, what should they be focused on? Um, I would say it is a good idea. You were at the FTC when they did a pharmaceutical uh, task force, and that resulted in enormous benefits for consumers uh, and for competition. Um, I think this is, uh, uh, this is very, very similar and modeled on that effort. And uh, I think uh, they should, um, well, I'll let the new, I'll, we'll let the, cur I'll let the current FTC figure out what they want to do, but I think this is a great announcement, and I think they should, um, they should uh, uh, use all of the authority of their agency to see whether there are any anti -competitive, there's any anti-competitive behavior um, in tech companies. I assume that's what they're doing. One issue that I've been very concerned about and that I've found Texans and, and people across the country are concerned about is, is big tech using its power to engage in political censorship, to silence voices with which they disagree and to amplify voices with which they agree. Um, to what extent, and I'm going to ask this just to any of the witnesses in the panel who care to respond, to what extent do you consider that to be problematic? And if so, what are the remedies to it? I'll, I'll jump in here, Senator, if that's all right. Um, when, I, when I look at the internet and internet platforms, um, I, I do see them as one of the greatest places for free speech and open expression anywhere. Um, and particularly as you look to conservative voices, um, they've found an audience online and there are countless examples of individuals who maybe wouldn't have been picked up in a newspaper or even on a Fox News who are able to build audiences of millions and millions of people and become household names and then later get picked up on TV programs because of the internet. Um, and it does provide incredible opportunity for all Americans and I don't necessarily think um, you'd want to see uh, the government stepping in uh, to regulate speech there. Well, I, I agree with that, and 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 going back to the the, uh, the tech task force, uh, you know, one of the other tools in the FTC's arsenal is, of course, the Six B study, which is the industry wide study where it just brings to public light the way uh, the way that uh, an industry is focusing, uh, or the way the industry is operating. And I suppose one possibility is they're looking at uh, a potential Six B. Well, and and let me amplify that because one of the most frustrating things about dealing with the question of tech censorship. It is that it is all marked in darkness and obscurity. There is no transparency whatsoever. Um, both this committee and the Judiciary Committee, on which I also sit, have repeatedly asked tech companies uh, even basic bare bones data in terms of how many speakers on their social media platform are they silencing? To what extent are they engaging in shadow banning? Uh, and shadow banning by its nature has been reported to be a process where a particular speaker is silenced, but that speaker doesn't know it because they send out a tweet, they send out a post, they appear to be communicating, and yet the tech platform does not allow those, including those who have affirmatively opt-in and chosen to hear that speaker, simply doesn't allow them to hear that speaker and, and those words, that speech goes into the e ether. And what is deeply frustrating is they have never once, to my knowledge, answered the question, are they doing it? To what extent is it widespread? To what extent is it politically targeted? How do they assess who they will silence? Uh, that is a degree of power handed to a handful of tech billionaires in California uh, to monitor and police and put not just a thumb, but all five fingers, a fist in their foot on the scales of the political discourse. Uh, let me ask this committee, a 6B study, I think uh, Mr. Leibowitz was, is, is a good potential tool. Uh, I see other potential tools. I think the Department of Justice ought to be looking at this question very closely. But let me ask the, ask the panel, if the objective is more transparency, knowing what, in fact, the tech companies are doing and to what extent they are engaged in active, systematic, deliberate bias censorship. What tools does Congress have or the executive branch have 
to ensure more transparency? Um, Senator, uh, transparency is is important and there always can be greater levels of transparency. Um, I will say that these platforms seek to serve all Americans regardless of, of political views and are open platforms to do so. Out of curiosity, based on what? Because I can tell you when Facebook testified before this committee and I submitted questions to Facebook about the extent to which they were censoring people, they essentially refused to answer those questions. And, and, and I asked Mr. Zuckerberg before this committee if Facebook had, had ever once silenced people on the left if, or, or if it was only people on the right, and, and, and he was unable and refused to answer those questions either. So sort of a, an amorphous commitment to everybody in the universe when some people are being silenced and others are not, that, that, that rings a little hollow. Each, each platform has a different set of community standards that perhaps we could do a better job of making it more clear and more transparent in what they are, and certainly mistakes are made sometimes with voices on the right, but mistakes are often made with voices on the left. Can, can you give an example? Not off the top of my head, but I mean, nobody happy. else can either. That, that's the lack of transparency right there, and one debates these issues using anecdotes. Anecdotes are not a very good, good way to debate an issue, but the reason you're forced to use anecdotes is because there are no data, there is no evidence, there are no objective numbers because of the lack of transparency. Thank you.